All right, thank you. So um, I am really excited to be here, or not at Finland. I really wish I was at Finland. It would be a lot more uh, cooler than it is right now over here in Florida. But I want to talk to you about the state of X dates. I've talked about X date and uh, state management and state machines a lot in the past. And in the last year, a lot has happened. But before we get into the state of X date, I sort of want to talk about the start of X date. Um, and where exactly it came from. So uh, it all started like, I, I want to say like back when I was a junior developer and I was working for a medical company making a lot of complex forms. And these were forms where it's like you had to show specific fields when the checkbox is checked. And then depending on certain conditions, it might take you to different states or different uh, steps in the workflow or, um, you know, just invalidate uh, based on async logic. And we weren't using any state management libraries or any frameworks at all. This was back uh, in the time when Angular was just starting to become a thing and Backbone was the most popular library, but we weren't allowed to use any of those. So uh, then I started researching, okay, there's got to be an easier way to do all of these flows. And I think in a very visual way. So that's when I started uh, researching state machines and I saw that it was a visual language. And I was really interested by this because the flow is very easy to follow, at least for you know me as a visual learner. Um, but then I decided like, okay, this is very useful, but they're a little bit too limited. So that's when I started uh, looking up state charts and state charts are an extension of state machines. And in a couple of days, there's going to be a bunch of talks explaining what state machines and state charts are, but they're basically a visual way of modeling your application logic. And I found that state machines and state charts are really cool and uh, useful for modeling the behavior of parts of your application. Um, but it, it's all about modeling the behavior and not necessarily how different components and things can talk to each other. So I realized that the actor model, which I later researched, um, that that and state machines actually fit together pretty well. And so all of these combined really make up X state. Um, and so when you talk about state management and think about other state management libraries like Redux, MobX, Vuex, or even up and coming ones like Recoil, Zustan, Jotai, all those, um, I feel like all of those fit into the state management bucket. And what I mean by state management is these are all really good libraries for um, you have a store for your states and you wanna manipulate that state somehow and you wanna do it in the easiest way possible. Um, but there is a need for what's called state orchestration. And so state orchestration is more about like not only state management, but determining how your state can transition over time and what are the behaviors at each of those different points in time and how do the behaviors change due to events. And so that's where XSAT comes in. Um, and so XSAT gives you the ability to know not only what happened and how your state changed, by how your state will change in the future by mapping out all the possible transitions, states, and events that can happen. So um, fast forward a few years later, I open sourced XState in 2015. Back at that time, it was known as Estado. And I guess almost six years later, um, you know, now XState is used at many companies around the world, which uh, I'm excited about. I, I came from Microsoft, but I actually wasn't involved with any part of Microsoft that used XState, but it's really cool to see that they were using that in production. Um, but this talk, uh, since I only have 15 minutes, uh, is mostly about what is new with XState, what's new and what's coming up. And so the, um, the features that I'm really excited about that are actually brand new and available today for you to use, uh, one is strongly typed models. So we introduced this, um, this helper function called create model where you give it the initial context and events. And these are event factories that create event objects for you. And so instead of calling create machine alone, you call the model dot create machine. And now you're going to have all of your uh, events strongly typed. You're going to have your context strongly typed all without having to you know, do that a really repetitive uh, TypeScript logic and putting all of those generic types everywhere. So if you're using XState with TypeScript, I highly recommend you use CreateModel because 
Uh, we also have some new things um, and improvements coming with Create Model in the future. Um, another thing I'm excited about is um, the fact that state machines are a bit of a learning curve and a lot of you are really used to using reducers. And so now with X states, you can actually get use that same logic from your reducers, put it in from reducer and spawn reducers or invoke them as actors directly in your state machines. So you could reuse the exact same logic and customize it however you want to do. Um, and so reducers are um, really useful and these actors are really useful for uh, if you already have existing logic and you want to incrementally move uh, to X states. Now, some upcoming features which are currently uh, in PR right now. The first one is strongly typed actions. So you might notice that we have a new property here called schema, and this allows you to create a schema, either just the type, or you could put some you know, values like JSON schema in there too, and present that as schema to the machine so that uh, in this case, all of your actions can be strongly typed. Now you could do the same thing with events, context, and in the future with guards and services too. And so the schema serves two purposes. The first is for strongly typing all parts of your machine, uh, which allows for autocomplete and um, you know, early error detection and things like that. And the second part is, especially if you use JSON schema, um, you could read that schema in runtime. So let's say you have schema for actions or events, you could automatically generate, for example, forms from that JSON schema uh, based on your machine. And so this opens the door to so many exciting possibilities. Uh, so I'm excited to uh, get actions and the rest of the schema uh, in there pretty soon in version four. Um, another one that it, it's a really small change, but I'm really excited about it is um, determining whether you could send an event or not. Before we used to have to duplicate uh, validation logic and um, disabled enabled logic. Uh, and what we're really trying to do when we're disabling a button or disabling a field is saying, I want to disable this if sending this event will not cause any change because it shouldn't cause any change. And now it's gonna become a lot easier. With state.can, you could just say, hey, if I send this event, will it change anything? If not, then maybe this button should be disabled. So it's just a really easy way to have uh, that improved both developer and user experience over there. And one of the biggest changes too that's coming up soon is deep actor persistence. So with X state, you could persist and restore states, uh, but with uh, X state, you could also spawn actors. And so uh, again, in a couple of days, there's going to be a talk on the actor model. Um, so in uh, coming up in X state, we are actually going to be able to persist these actors so that when you restore your machine state, like let's say you refresh your browser window or come back to it after pulling it from local storage, it's going to attempt to rehydrate each one of those actors at the states that they were persisted. And if you're not able to, then it will just start the actor as new and everything will still work as normal. So that's one of the big features that's coming up and it's one that's been highly requested. Um, so the XState uh, ecosystem is currently made up of a lot of modules, especially um, integrations with frameworks like React, Vue, and Spelt, and helper utilities like uh, FSM, test for model-based testing, Grab, which is used to power a lot of our visualization and uh, testing utilities, and Inspect, which allows you to communicate your state machine running in your live application directly to an inspector. Uh, we do have a few upcoming modules too. And so um, we, and these, these are preliminary, but um, one of our engineers, uh, Matt Pocock, is working on XState Parser and XState CLI. So this is going to give a whole new set of static analysis abilities uh, to your state machines, and it's going to enable a lot of really cool things. And so uh, three other things that we're working on too is X state form, X state router, and X state query for all of the common applications that you would uh, you would probably want to use a state machine for in your application. And uh, these libraries are going to help making the creation of forms, routers, and querying async data a lot safer, a lot easier, and most importantly, able to be visualized. 
And uh, this is all even before X8 version 5, which we're still working on. And uh, a lot of big changes are coming there too, but not huge changes as in breaking API changes, but uh, more just really um, good quality of life improvements. Um, one big thing, or rather I should say small thing is that X8 version five is going to be more modular. So instead of importing all of X8, you could choose exactly what you want to import. And so this is going to result in a smaller file size. Um, there's also going to be higher order guards, which are going to allow you to combine different guards, whether they're serialized or inline inside of your machine definitions. And this allows the guards to be visualized in some creative ways as well. Uh, we're also going to be introducing partial wildcards so that you could say, if my event starts with mouse.something, uh, then uh, respond to it with this transition. And so this allows a lot more flexibility and succinctness in your machine definitions. Um, but yeah, the other big things that I, um, I'm really excited to release, uh, in fact, I'm publicly releasing them tomorrow, but you're the first to know about it, is uh, first stately.ai slash viz. This is the new visualizer uh, that is a vast improvement to the old one. If you go to xstatejsorg slash viz, um, you're going to see that there's a huge difference between this and the upcoming stately visualizer. So if, um, if you visit the visualizer, you can now enter your machine definitions in TypeScript. There's an entirely new layout algorithm for uh, laying out all of the states. And now you could also share your machines in the stately AI registry. So whatever you create in the visualizer, save it to the registry and you're able to fork other machines or favorite them or, um, you know, just share them with people so that they could simulate your machines and understand your application logic just by sharing a link. And the final thing that we're working on and hopefully getting it out within the next couple of months is the stately editor. And so hopefully we're going to be having a beta coming out soon for this. Um, and so this is going to allow you to create state machines visually without having to, um, to manually code them, or you can manually code them if you want. Uh, the main idea here is that we want you to be able to um, not have to uh, have both documentation and code be two completely separate things. Rather, we want you to have your documentation be completely in sync with your code uh, so that it's never out of date. Because that has been one of the biggest struggles from all the years I've been working in various projects is that we would have all of these nice, beautiful architecture diagrams and uh, logical flows and user flows and everything. But as soon as it gets to the code implementation, those flows quickly become out of date. And so that's something that we're looking to solve with the stately editor and the suite of visualization and analysis tools that we're going to be introducing soon. And so um, you could find all of this information at stately.ai if you um, sign up for the mailing list uh, and also, please join our community at discord.gg slash xstate. And with that, thank you so much, React Finland. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Uh, let's move on to the discussion and uh, see if we have any questions from this uh, international audience. So, OK, first one. I guess that's more for Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I talked to David a little bit and played around with it. I've, I've got demos of it. I, I haven't made like an official integration, um, hoping to kind of play with it a bit more of the community to get an idea of what they want to see out of this kind of integration. One of the cool things that we can do with Solid is uh, apply the changes fine grain. So you can update a, a machine and then like have only certain properties update certain parts of the DOM. So it's all like uh, split out automatically without selectors or anything. So we, we, we still got some more research to do, but I'm looking forward to seeing a official integration. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you are Matti like to talk. Uh, it was great, great uh, from my point of view as well. Uh, so now we don't have so many questions from the audience. <laughs> so, I mean, one thing I, I was thinking about, uh, is this uh, like when you write an application, you write some logic? Uh, how much of this logic can be separate from the from React or Solid or or Vue or whatever you're using? 
So yeah, that's really the main point of X8 is that your logic is completely agnostic. And we first had integrations with React and actually that's the one that we spent the most time with just because React, uh, it, it's not exactly an events driven um, framework or library or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you do have to do some workarounds for that. Um, but yeah, we've seen integrations for views, Svelte work really well. Um, it works pretty naturally actually with Svelte and Angular just because it's a subscribable store and I'd imagine solid as well. Um, but yeah, the entire point is for you to have your entire logic framework agnostic and in the future language agnostic as well. Yeah, yeah that's cool. And if I remember right, there's some kind of standard for for state machines. So so just like you can get, I don't know if it's XML or whatever, but you can get some kind of definition out of it, and that that's that's what you can throw around. Yeah, exactly. It's called SEXML, which stands for. Oops, I mean myself, which stands for State Chart XML. And uh, yeah, there's actually a lot of implementations in different languages. So whatever you create in X state, in theory, can be run in different languages since it follows mm -hmm. that spec. And I guess you have a lot of tooling around this. So when, mm -hmm. when you have a uh, standard and it's, it's like with this testing and other things. Uh, and we have a question. Does X state play nicely with other libraries like React Router or form libraries? Yeah, so the way that X state plays around with virtually any library is X state is, it, it's simple. And of course, simple doesn't mean easy. By simple, I mean it's completely events driven. So events and state driven which means if you want to communicate with X8, you do so via an event. Now, this could be you know, a little bit of boilerplate where you have to convert everything, especially if you're using it in React, you have to put it in use effect. And whenever something changes in that use effect, you're sending an event over to an X8 machine. Uh, but what that means is that that event, it doesn't matter where it comes from. We don't have to build specific integrations with every single popular library out there. Everything is just an event. And so that's the way that it would work with React Router uh, and other form libraries and even libraries like React Query, React 3 Fiber. I'm actually really excited to play around with that and make some uh, games with that. But yeah. Cool. Uh, more questions. So will there be any improvements to manage global state machines in XState React without send parent? Maybe a, a use global machine hook. Yeah, that's, that's something that the Stately team has actually been thinking about a lot um, is at, at first, our X8 was local component first. So you have use machine, which is just like use reducer. You put them in your individual components. But we were thinking like Redux's idea of having a global store is actually useful because you do want data shared with a lot of components. But we don't agree with the whole single global store idea. So more it's like a global system where you have stores that communicate with other stores. And so components can subscribe to any of those stores in the global system. And so, uh, yeah, look out for that soon. We actually merged a PR recently that's going to be an important fix to getting that working. Yeah, cool. Uh, next one, does it make sense to think integrating x with MobX State Tree or are there overlapping solutions? I think Mavic State Tree is cool, and uh, there were some people who did look at look at integrating that with X State a while ago. Um, I'll have to experiment with it more, but I think what we're doing in X State very much mirrors what Mavic State Tree is doing architecture-wise. So uh, there might be some overlap. Mm 